welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our dye Build a Drink Mason Jar add-on. This little mason jar is so cute and it's awesome on its own, but what's really cool is that you can mix and match it with elements from the original Build a Drink and also the Build a Drink cocktail add-on. So you can mix and match the fruit by adding the blueberry into the cocktail and the cherry and the lemon into the mason jar. You could also do things like use the straw in the Build a Drink or use the umbrella from the Build a Drink in the mason jar. So it is so much fun to mix and match these. So let's go ahead and check it out. And here are all of the pieces in the Build a Drink mason jar. We have the mason jar frame and the mason jar base. We have a lid for the mason jar and a cute little handle to turn it into the perfect little drink. We have a straw that you can add into the mason jar and this adorable little tag and a perfect heart that fits on side. We have a little string where you can hide the tag or a bow from and then the cutest little blueberry ever. Now here is how you can layer a lot of these elements. So we're going to add some adhesive to the back of the jar and layer that over the jar main base. And then you can see how you can put the lid on the jar and even decorate it with the cute little string. And that really helps it feel like a jam jar. I think this is super, super cute. I mean, look at that with the bow. It's just adorable. And then of course you can mix and match more of the elements. So you could take that little heart there and you can layer it right onto the tag. You could also stamp something on the tag too. And then you can thread the tag through that string and you can hang the little tag on the jar. And I think this is just so very sweet. And then this looks so cute with the jar lid on too. I just love that. Then you can remove those elements and you can take that little handle and you can add it to either side of the jar, which is really, really cute. And it really makes it look like a drinking cup now as well. I think this is just adorable. And you can see just how much fun that is. And then this little straw just makes it and you can tuck it right into the mason jar there and have it going down into your drink. And we'll be showing you some cute ways to do that with a shaker element as well. We have two layers for this adorable little blue berry. And you can see when you layer them together, it gives all this great dimension. And so you can create a cute drink like a blueberry lemonade that you can layer right there into the jar. And I think it just looks so, so sweet. And of course you can add any of the other decorative elements like the cute little string in the bow or the tag. There's so many fun things to do with it and you can create shakers with it. So that is what we're gonna do next. So let's get crafting. Now we're gonna start creating a card with this awesome build to drink mason jar add-on. And one of the things that I love about this little mason jar is that you can turn it into a shaker. So that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm going through the Rainbow Ever After paper pad and it has this gorgeous gradient paper. And I'm kind of playing around looking through my die to see what would make the perfect blueberry lemonade kind of drink here. And I think that looks really, really pretty. So I went ahead and die cut that. And you can see that this is gonna fill our mason jar with like the prettiest purpley drink. And by having the gradient, it really does make it look like it's one of those like fancy lemonades you get at a restaurant. Now I've gone ahead and die cut the frame of the mason jar here out of white cardstock. And I have die cut that eight times. And we are gonna be stacking these to create a little well for our shaker. So I'm taking my glue tube here and just adding glue tube all along the back of this mason jar frame. And then I'm gonna layer that onto that beautiful mason jar base that we die cut out of that rainbow ever after paper. And you can see just how adorable this is. Of course, you could make a flat mason jar that looked just like this, or you can start stacking a bunch of mason jar frames on top to create a shaker. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So we're gonna add liquid glue to the back of each of these, and then we're gonna go ahead and layer that on top. And as we keep stacking the pieces of cardstock, it's gonna give us some height inside of there for some little shaker pieces to bounce around, which is gonna make it look like it's a bubbly drink. The other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to add the handle onto this. So I'm adding a bit of liquid glue to the ends of the handle and I'm just gonna layer that right into the mason jar. And then I'm just gonna keep stacking my pieces over top and that's gonna give it a nice finished look. So now we can add some liquid glue to another one of the frames and then stack that on top again. And I think the mason jar is so cute with the handle. It's just adorable. Now that we've finished stacking those frames, you can see the height that we've created, and that height there is gonna give some space for some little sequins to bounce around in our shaker. But before we do that, we're gonna add a little bit more decoration. We're gonna be taking this adorable blueberry that's in the mason jar, and I think the blueberry is one of my favorite parts. It's just so cute. And we're gonna die cut that from some different shades of textured card socks, some purples and blues. And you'll see that there's a base for the blueberry and then kind of the main blueberry piece. So we're gonna add some liquid glue to the back of these, and then layer it over the main blueberry piece. And I really like that dark blue behind the purple. I think it really gives it some nice dimension. 
To add a little more dimension to the blueberries, I'm gonna find some markers to match them. So I'm just laying them right on top of my marker chart and there's some pretty good matches there. And then I'm gonna take the marker and just draw like a little line around the bottom. It's kind of like the messier the better. And then I'm gonna go ahead and blend it out with my colorless blender. You can see that my colorless blender, I kind of overfilled the marker, but it kind of worked because it made the blend happen. So now my marker was acting a little bit better. I'm gonna blend that and you'll see that that colorless blender marker is gonna dry and just end up giving it this really pretty dimension and I love doing that to die cuts because it's quick and easy to pick one color and the colorless blender and you're going to get a really pretty look. So I'm going to layer these there in the bottom of the jar. You could also have the blueberries shaking in the jar which would be really cute but I decided to just glue those down at the bottom. And then I'm gonna add some white gel pen details. And right now I am recreating a card by Grace. And Grace, this card is so incredible and it was so much fun to make. So now that I have all of my details that are going on the inside of my mason jar, I'm gonna start working on creating the shaker. And so here I have some double-sided adhesive sheets and I'm just gonna lay my jar right on top of the double-sided adhesive sheet. And I'm just going to trim down a piece that's about the right size. I'm gonna peel off one side of this and I'm going to be sticking that to my cardstock, just like that. That's gonna effectively create a cardstock sticker, which is gonna make it really easy to create our shaker window. So then I'm just gonna tape my die down and run that through the die cut machine. And now I have a piece of white cardstock die cut into the mason jar frame shape with some of that adhesive on the back. And I have two of those. So I went ahead and did two of them. Next, I want my shaker to shake really well. So I like to use an anti-static powder tool and just run it all along the inside frame of my shaker. That powder will make sure to kind of neutralize any extra stickiness that you have in there and it'll make sure that all your pieces are gonna move around really well. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and add in my sequins. So I'm just adding in some clear sequins so that it maybe looks like it's a bubbly drink. I think it's a really, really fun look and you can kind of see how those are gonna move around in there. The other thing this bubbly drink needs is a straw. So we're gonna take our straw die cut and we're actually gonna die cut some of this rainbow stripe paper from Rainbow Ever After. And it's gonna make it look like it's one of those little striped straws. I thought this was the cutest detail that Grace did. I mean, look at that little straw. It's just the sweetest thing ever. Then the other thing that we're going to do is we're gonna take the main base piece and we're gonna die cut some acetate. And that is going to be creating our shaker window. Then we're gonna take one of those mason jars that has a double-sided adhesive sheet on it, and on the back, we're going to be adding some liquid glue so that we can attach that onto our shaker piece. So I'm gonna add liquid glue all along the back of that, and then we're actually going to take the straw and we're going to put the straw right through just like that. Then we can layer this on to our shaker, and what's great about this is, is the top is going to have that double-sided adhesive sheet, which is gonna make it a lot easier to adhere it to the acetate, because I didn't want any of the liquid glue seeping out onto the acetate. So now we'll take our other mason jar frame piece, and you'll see I'm just peeling off the back because we created a sticker with that double-sided adhesive sheet. I'm just gonna take out those extra little pieces there. And then once I do that, I can layer it right onto the acetate piece. And this is going to create our window. And once again, by using the double-sided adhesive sheet, we have made sure that we're not gonna have any extra liquid glue seeping out. But if you are very careful with your liquid glue, you could create this with liquid glue too. I'm just not the most careful gluer. <laughs> so now that we have our frame piece, we can go ahead and peel up the rest of our double-sided adhesive sheet there that's on our main shaker piece. And then once we have that peeled up, we can layer our awesome window here. Now, I wish I would have put the little straw there through the top of the jar. I forgot on the shaker, but it still looks really cute, so that's okay. So we're gonna layer that on top, and now we have created the world's cutest shaker. I mean, oh my goodness, is this not the best? I mean, look how adorable this is. It is so cute and so much fun. Now, I was having such a blast creating shakers, I mean, oh my goodness, they're just so much fun, that we thought it would be fun to create some more shakers and use some of the other fruit pieces that come in the other Build-A-Drink items. So we're gonna go through our Rainbow Ever After pack, and this time we're gonna be using this one that kind of feels a little bit like a strawberry lemonade. And again, I'm kind of looking through my dye and just kind of seeing where is the perfect look. I wanted a little bit of pink at the bottom and then yellow at the top. So now we've die cut our base there, and we are gonna repeat the same thing that we did to create our our blueberry lemonade shaker. So I'm gonna die cut the mason jar frame about eight times and we're gonna be adding liquid glue onto the back of these and we're gonna be stacking those up onto that beautiful gradient paper that we die cut. And this is going to be creating our shaker. 
Next, we're gonna add our handle. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue to the back of the handle and I'm gonna layer that and I'm actually gonna do it on the other side of the jar. So I love that you could do either side of the jar. So I'm just gonna layer that on there and then layer one more of those frames to give it a nice clean look. Now we need to look for some things to decorate this adorable strawberry lemonade. And what we need is a super cute strawberry. So we're gonna take a look at the awesome build a drink cocktail add-on and that has the really, really cute strawberry in it. And so we're gonna die cut the strawberry from some chili pepper cardstock and then the green top from some algae cardstock. And then to create the little seeds, I'm actually just going to take some yellow cardstock. I'm gonna put the strawberry right over top and just trace it really quickly. And then just trim out what I trace just like that right along the inside of the pencil line and then I'll be able to add some liquid glue to the back of this and layer it behind the strawberry to add those little yellow seeds. Then we can layer the leafy top on top of that and I'm gonna go ahead and glue that right into the jar. And just like we did for the blueberries, I'm gonna add a little bit of detail with a marker. So I'm gonna take a red marker and just layer that around the outside and I'll blend it out with a colorless blender and same thing with the green for the top. Now we're gonna start working on the shaker elements and we're gonna do it in the same way that we did the blueberry one. So we have our cute little straw cut from striped paper and then two mason jar frames that have the double-sided adhesive sheets on them, just like we did before. We've also cut that base from some acetate. We're gonna take some liquid glue and put it on the back of one of the pieces that has the double-sided adhesive sheet. We're gonna tuck our cute little straw in there and then we're just gonna layer that right on top of our mason jar. Once we have that in place, we can go ahead and work on adding some of our shaker elements. So we're gonna use that anti-static powder tool to remove any excess stickiness that might be inside of our shaker. And then we're gonna take those cute little sequins and put them in once again to give it kind of a bubbly look. The next step is to remove the double-sided adhesive sheet on the other frame. That's gonna give us a cute little mason jar sticker here and we are gonna layer that right onto our acetate piece. Then once we have that layered onto the acetate piece, we can go ahead and lift up the double-sided adhesive sheet that we have on the mason jar shaker and then layer our window right on top. And now our next little mini shaker is done. And I'm telling you, I can't stop smiling. Playing with these is so much fun. It's just so cute with the little handle and the little shaker pieces. I mean, it is just adorable. And what's so cute about the mason jar is you can create kind of a base card like we did here that's just a mason jar or you can create little shakers and you can see how the same card design could be done either with a plain mason jar or a shaker and look how cute it is with the little umbrella in it. I mean there are just so many cute things that you can do with it. So now it's time to make our last shaker. And again, we're gonna go into the Rainbow Ever After because it has these beautiful colors. But this time we're gonna go into those greens and yellows because we're gonna be creating some cucumber water for this one. So just like we did before, we're gonna be die cutting the base and then we're gonna cut a bunch of the frames and we'll add liquid glue to those frames and we're gonna stack them up and we're gonna make sure to add the handle into our stack so that we have a cute little mason jar with a handle and a nice place to put all of our shaker bits. Now for this little shaker, we talked about making it cucumber water and the original build a drink, there is a super cute little cucumber. So we're gonna be die cutting that from some algae cardstock and also some watercolor wishes and white cardstock too. And we're gonna layer all these pieces together. So we're gonna take our middle piece there and we're just gonna add some liquid glue and layer that over top. And then I'll add liquid glue into all of those little seed openings. And then I can just lay the white one right over top and pop those little seeds in to create our cucumber. Then we can add some liquid glue to the back of our cucumber and we're gonna layer that in to this adorable drink and it's just gonna look so cute. Then the next thing we need to do is add our shaker elements. So again, we're going to be using our anti-static powder tool to make sure we remove any excess stickiness and then we can just sprinkle some of these sequins in to be our cute little bubbly water. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on all of our shaker elements again, just like we did before. So we're gonna have two of those mason jar frames that have those double-sided adhesive sheets on them. We're also gonna die cut the main base piece out of some acetate and we have our cute striped straw too. We'll add some liquid glue to the back of one of the pieces that has the double-sided adhesive sheet. We're gonna tuck in our straw and then we're gonna attach that on to the jar. And I love that you can have the straw in different directions or sticking out of the jar at different heights. So I kind of played around with the different ones of those. Once we have that attached on, we can go ahead and remove the liner paper on the other mason jar piece and then we can attach it onto our acetate, creating our shaker window. Then the next step is to pull, peel up the liner paper that is on our mason jar shaker part, and then we can layer our window right on top, creating our shaker. 
And of course, now for the best part, we can give it a little shake and those little sequins bouncing around are too cute. And here I wanted to compare it to all of the other shakers that we created. And what I love about this is that you could easily create just three different cards with this, or you can stack them all together on one card, which is what I'm gonna be doing now. And here I have some more paper from the Rainbow Ever After so that everything coordinates really nicely. And then we're also going to be taking some of these reverse scallop rectangles here, and I'm gonna die cut that from some white cards at stock to give us a really cute cute scallop frame. And so we'll just add some liquid glue behind that and then layer that onto our pretty pattern paper. Next, we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runner to that and then we can layer this pretty base of our card right on top. Now here I wanted to show you how cute it is if you just put one of these little shaker jars on a card. I mean, it is adorable. It's so sweet there as a landscape card and it would be really cute as a portrait style with a little sentiment underneath. I just love it so much. But in this case, I wanted to be a little extra. So we're gonna put three jars onto the card. So I'm gonna add some tape runner on the back of my jars there that are gonna go on the left and the right. And then my blueberry lemonade is gonna go in the middle. And I'm just gonna add some foam squares down the bottom or the back of the blueberry lemonade so that it lines up nicely because it's going to be layering over top of those other shakers that have some height to them. And now you can see with them all stacked up, it looks so, so cute. Now we're gonna add some more details to the outside of the mason jar. So I went ahead and prepped a strawberry and a blueberry just like we did for the inside of the jars. And I'm adding some white gel pen details to those. And then I'm going to shop my stash for cute little mice. So here I have so very mice. And then I'm also using Bubbles of Joy and Dandy Day. And the reason I really love these sets is because there are some cute little mice that are either blowing on a dandelion or blowing bubbles. But it kind of looks like they might also be drinking from a straw. And look how cute this is. I mean, oh my goodness, isn't that adorable? I'm gonna tuck his little paw right behind the straw so it looks like he's holding it, and I think this is just the cutest thing ever. And now we can do the same thing with this other little mouse. I mean, I'm just smiling, it's so sweet. Then I'm gonna go ahead and layer a little strawberry there down in the corner, and then we'll layer a little mouse sitting on top of the strawberry. And then we have this guy from So Very Mice, and he's usually holding a sewing needle, but instead we are going to have him hold a little blueberry, which I think is such a cute look. I think this is just adorable. It's such a fun way to use all of the little mice in a unique, adorable card. Now you can see those cute little shakers already, but now it's time to work on our sentiment. And so here you'll see, this is some rainbow ever after paper. And what I love about these big stripes is that you can use the different colors of stripes to cut banners in gorgeous shades of pastel. So here we have this nice light kind of lavender color. We're gonna prep it with an anti-static tool and we're gonna be using the Henry's Build a Sentiment set. We went ahead and curved that to match the curve of the banner. We're gonna stamp it in some clear embossing ink and then we can go ahead and sprinkle on some white embossing powder. We'll tap off any of the excess, and then we'll go ahead and heat it up with our heat tool to have a nice, bright, white, shiny sentiment. Then we can take this sentiment and add some adhesive to the back, and then we're gonna layer that up into the top of the card. Then the last finishing touch, we're gonna use the cute little string and tag that are included in the mason jar. And once again, we're gonna use this big rainbow stripe paper from Rainbow Ever After, and we're going to be die cutting these little pieces out of those colors. And the reason I love to do this is I know it's gonna match all the different elements on my card because it all comes from the same paper collection. So we're die cut the little string, the tag, and the heart, and now we need to layer these pieces. So we're gonna add some adhesive onto the back of the heart and layer that onto the tag. And then we're gonna add some adhesive to the back of that little string. And then we can thread the tag through the string. And then we can layer this whole thing onto a mason jar. And it is such a cute look. You can also use the little bow, but I thought this tag was just too cute. And so we're gonna layer that onto the one in the middle there. And then have the tag kind of off to the side. And I think that's just a really, really cute look. I love it. the little extra added elements just make the card so special. And now here you can see the shaker in action. It is so cute and so much fun. I just love all of those little shaker bits. I think this card would make anyone smile. And so that sending smiles your way is just the perfect sentiment. Now this little mason jar is so cute as a drink, but it also makes a really, really great vase. And that's what we're gonna do next. 
So we're going to start off with some of the textured cardstock in different shades of green, and we are going to be die cutting the new lovely Lily of the Valley die. And so we're going to die cut the stems and also the leaves of this, and the leaves we'll have in the darker green and the stems in the lighter. And then for those cute little flowers, we are going to be die cutting those from some white shimmer cardstock. And there's something about using the shimmer cardstock or the pixie dust sparkle cardstock with these guys that makes them feel so special. So now that we've die cut a ton of those flowers, we can go ahead and use some tape runner and just add a little bit of tape to each one of those little circles. You could also do this with liquid glue too. Once you have that, you can start layering all the flowers on and there's something so beautiful about this because this whole flower stem just comes to life. Then we can add some adhesive to the other stem and then layer our flowers on again in the same way and I think these are just so beautiful. And then here you can see how these flowers are gonna to start to layer and once you add the leaves, uh, it just fills in the whole thing. But we're gonna put these aside now and we're gonna start working on the vase and we're gonna use the Build a Drink mason jar add-on to do that. So first we're gonna cut the base from some blue shimmer and then we're gonna cut the frame from some white cardstock. And we're gonna be layering these two together. Now you could just fill the whole jar with water or you can actually bring out one of the other Build-A-Drinks and that's our original Build-A-Drink. And it has that cute little line there which you can use to die cut this piece to have it kind of be partially filled with water which I think is really pretty. So we're gonna line that up right on there, hold that in place with some low-tech tape and then run it through the die cut machine. And now you'll see we'll have a die cut piece that's gonna perfectly fit behind the jar. We're gonna add some tape runner to the back of the jar frame and then just layer this piece right on. And there you'll see just how gorgeous it is with that beautiful shimmer. Now we can bring back our flowers and start to layer them into the jar and we're gonna make our beautiful flower arrangement. So we're just gonna add some adhesive to the back of the stems to help hold them in place. And then we can kind of tuck them into the jar there and then in front of the water, just like that. And what's really fun about this is it really does feel like you're creating a beautiful flower arrangement, but it's with your die cut flowers. Now we're gonna take those leaves and we'll add some adhesive onto those. And then we're gonna tuck those there behind the flowers to kind of fill in our whole arrangement. And you'll see just how gorgeous this is. So we're just gonna tuck that right there towards the top so that we have nice dark green behind our flowers, which really helps them pop. Now that our beautiful arrangement is done, we can start working on the card. And so we're gonna take out some Rainbow Ever After paper with those beautiful stripes that are so gorgeous and also some Spiffy Speckles paper. This is some spiffier speckles actually because it's got the beautiful gold foil. And so we're gonna add some adhesive onto that and then just layer it onto the ground to kind of be the ground for our arrangement here. Then we'll take our vase filled with flowers. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more adhesive onto that and we can layer that right onto the card. Then to add a little bit of extra detail, we are gonna be using one of the other elements from the Build a Drink Mason Jar, and it has that cute little bow. So on the other card, we added the little tag. Well, you can also do the string with a bow too. And so we're gonna die cut that from some more textured cardstock in this beautiful purple color to match our stripes in the background. And then we're just gonna layer that on. So we're gonna layer the little string there as if we tied a little piece of twine around our jar, and then layer the bow right on top. And it really does end up looking like it's an actual bow tied around. I think it's just so cute and sweet. Now this card is gorgeous just like this, but I love critters. So we're gonna take our happy couple set and we're gonna be using these cute little bunnies and we're gonna make this into a Mother's Day card. So I think it's really cute because it looks like a mama and baby bunny kind of hugging. And so we're gonna add those on with some foam squares to give them a nice pop. And then for the sentiment, we're going to look for a banner and we're gonna choose one of these wavy banners, which is gonna look really cute over the jar. We'll die cut that from some white cardstock and then we're gonna use the new Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring for the sentiment. And we're gonna be stamping in some fresh lavender ink to go along with that pretty purple bow that we added to the mason jar. So we're gonna take Happy Mother's Day from the Henry's Build a Sentiment and curve it onto the block to match the banner. And then we can ink it up with that pretty fresh lavender ink and just stamp that right into the banner. Then we can add some tape runner to the back of the banner and layer it over the jar. And I think that is just such a pretty look with it over the jar. It's a really fun way to do the sentiment. Then we'll add some foam squares to the back of this whole panel. And then we're gonna layer that on a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter so that there's a nice little white border around that whole cute image. And now this card is done. And I love the idea of using this jar as a vase. And next up, Shari has a super cute idea for Easter with the mason jar. So take it away, Shari. I'm recreating a card by Elena today. So thank you so much, Elena, for letting me recreate this. I've pulled out the Rainbow Ever After Petite Paper Pack and I'm starting with 
with this green stripe pattern paper as my background. I've used the quilted backdrop die to cut out this pattern paper and then I'm going to add some liquid glue around all four sides and through some of those center areas and I will just layer this onto a white card base and this will allow that white cardstock to peek through all of those little die cut openings. Then I'm going to finish this off with a white stitch rectangle frame and this frames this pattern paper up so nicely. Next up I've pulled out these springtime bunny dies and I've cut a bunch of carrots from white cardstock. So I have a bunch of the backer pieces and a bunch of the die cuts. And I'm just going to color these with my markers to give them color. So for the tops of the carrots which I've put on this piece of tape to hold them in place, I added a little bit of dark green at the base and then I blended it out with a lighter green. And I'm doing the same with the carrots and I think I ended up cutting about 10 or 11 carrots. I'm starting with a dark color on one side of the carrot and then I'm blending out with the lighter color. And you could cut these from colored cardstock but this was a really quick way to make a whole bunch of carrots. Now I need to assemble all these carrots and to do this I am putting some adhesive runner all over that solid back piece. Next I'll add the frame which is white then I can add my pieces that I Copic colored. And now I have a carrot assembly line. So I'm speeding this up so that you can see me making all of these fun carrots. These were really easy to make really quickly. Once I have all the carrots done, I'm just going to set that aside for a moment and cut out the pieces of my Build-A-Drink mason jar. So I have the solid piece cut from some vellum. Then I cut the lid of the jar from some gold metallic cardstock and then I cut the jar itself, the outline piece right here, from some vanilla malt cardstock three times. And I'm going to stack these to give my jar some dimension. You could also stack these to make a shaker card, but all of my carrots on this card are glued down today. So I'm just tracing around that frame of the mason jar with some liquid glue and stacking those three together. Once I have these three stacked together, I will add that piece of vellum to the back, which I think is a really fun way to make it look like glass and kind of block out what's behind it, but you can still see through it a little bit. And then finally, I can add that gold metallic lid, which I think makes it look like a genuine mason jar. Now to add all of the carrots. I was going to try and lay them out and then pick them up and put them down, but I decided just to go for it and start filling this jar with carrots. So I'm going to start at the bottom and just kind of start layering them you can see I'm leaving some space in between, but I am going to layer them directly on top and start to fill in those empty spaces in between the carrots. Once I got to this point, I did have some corners that I felt were a little empty. So I'm going to take a couple of carrots and trim them down and try to tuck them in behind so that you just see the tops of them. So I'm pulling those carrots I've already glued down up a little bit and tucking that green top to fill in that top left corner. And then I'll actually do the same for one here on the bottom. And I think if I trim this a little bit closer to the green, I will be able to tuck that in a little easier. I don't really need to see any of that orange carrot. I just want that green sort of peeking out. So I'll add a little bit of glue to this and tuck that in there. And now this jar looks really nice and full. Next I'm pulling out the shadow box card spring add-on and I have cut this little jumping bunny from some white cardstock and I'm just adding some pink Copic marker tint to his ears and a little cheek and then I also added some little white gel pen details. Next I'm pulling out the new garden snail die set which has this really fun grass die. I've cut this from some green spiffy speckles paper and I'm doing this a little different. I've removed the outline of the grass and I'm going to add the inside piece of the grass to the background piece which this is not typically how we use these kind of dies but it really created this really fun layered cool grass look that Elena had on her card. 
So it's just a different way to use this die. And it's just the same tone on tone paper, but you can see it kind of gives it some dimension. For my sentiment, I'm using the giant Happy Easter die, and I've cut it from some vanilla malt cardstock as well as some guava cardstock. And I am going to cut the word Happy and Easter apart. And I felt like it was easier to do this before I layered them together. So I'm just cutting right where the letters meet. And it may not be perfect, but it's okay because in Elena's design, she cleverly hid where we cut apart these letters with her elements on her card. So you'll see how that all comes together here. So I'll add some liquid glue to the back of the cream colored cardstock and layer that on top of the pink and give it a little offset so that I have a little bit of a drop shadow on those words. And I just put my block on there to kind of hold it flat while that glue sets and it really doesn't take long at all. Now I can start to assemble my card and I will start with this sentiment. The happy goes at the top and that Easter goes at the bottom and then we will start to fill in between those two sentiment words. Next, I'm pulling out those little grass tufts that I made and I will tuck this behind the E and I like how it overhangs onto the frame. And then I will do the same with the one on the right side, tucking that behind the R and letting those blades of grass overlap onto the frame. Now there are two carrots that I did not put in the jar and that was on purpose. These are going to go on either side of the jar. And like I said, this helps kind of cover up where we cut those letters apart. Next, of course, we have our big jar and that is going to cover up a little bit of those letters as well. Since I used vellum, but I filled it with the carrots, I can easily put glue all over the back. And I'm just centering that up in the card with a little bit of a diagonal tilt. Now for my bunny, I wanted to fill in his eye, so I just took a piece of scrap cardstock, colored it with a black marker, and punched it out with a hole punch, and then I'm layering it on the back side of his open eye. I have some foam squares on the back so he can be popped up, and I'm just putting him right at the top of that jar. And then finally, she used the garden snail die, and there are some hearts in this die set, and I'm cutting mine from some pixie dust cardstock for a little bit of sparkle and just adding those two little hearts to that other side of the jar. And here is that finished card inspired by Elena's card and I just think it turned out so cute. Oh my goodness, Shari, I love this card so much. And that mason jar with the lid, especially out of gold, looks so cool. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this one by Audrey is just stunning. I love how she filled the jar with flowers. It's beautiful for spring. I love this card by Rebecca and how she's mixed and matched a bunch of different build-a-drink elements all together. The ice cubes with the blueberries and that little umbrella are just too cute. This card by Yanea is stunning. I love how she used vellum for the water in the jar and the lily of the valley in the jar is just beautiful. Megan was super creative and she made a jam jar out of her mason jar and I think this is just the cutest thing with the strawberries all around. And then here is the card by Grace that inspired us to make ours today. I just love making shakers out of these little mason jars. And that's what Elise did here. She filled her mason jars full of sunflowers and lots of little shaker beads and I just love it. This is the card by Elena that inspired Shari to make hers today, and it is just so cute. I love the carrots in the jar. And then I love how Letitia added a tropical theme and how she colored in the beautiful drink inside her mason jar. It's so sweet. Here, Mindy filled the jar with flowers, and I think this is just so beautiful. I love the inking that she added at the bottom. And then Maureen's idea to fill the jar with fireflies in a beautiful forest is just stunning. So we cannot wait to see all of your Build-A-Drink mason jar cards, so make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!